I've got another story for us this week, and this one took place way back, back when I was in the fifth grade. So I was a pretty good student in school, and I never got in trouble, except for one time. So I was in the fifth grade, and that year I loved my teacher. She was wonderful. And even though I was a good student, I really, really struggled when it came to tests. I would get so worried and so anxious. I would shake, I would get sweaty. I was a horrible test taker. And one day we had a test, as you do, and it was a social studies test. And we had about 30 minutes to do it. And I was sitting there and I was looking at, down at my paper and I was trying to answer the questions, but I couldn't think of the answer. And I was getting nervous and then the teacher said, okay, five more minutes. And I only had two of the questions answered. And I started freaking out. I was too embarrassed to go ask my teacher for help. And I had a few friends in that class who oftentimes cheated off of each other. They would um, copy each other's homework or tests. And one of those friends noticed that I was freaking out, that I was struggling and I wouldn't finish my test in time. And she slid her paper over to me and I started copying. Well, my teacher saw and she came over and she took my test away. And she pulled me aside, she said, Lauren, why are you cheating? And that scared me, so I just acted surprised and said, I wasn't cheating, this is a partner test. But she knew, I knew it wasn't, she knew I was lying. And then when I saw the look on her face, when she knew that I was lying, I burst into tears and just started sobbing. I felt horrible. I loved my teacher. I didn't cheat on tests. That was unlike me. But instead, I cheated and I chose to lie. And so I was crying and this teacher was so sweet. She hugged me and she said, Lauren, I know that you're sorry for what you did and I forgive you, but there's still gonna be consequences. So let's just say I was given a lot of homework night. So sometimes it's easier just to go along with others than to tell the truth. But Jesus wants us to stand up for what we know is true and right. Jesus had to tell the truth too. When he was put on trial, you know, last week we talked about how he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was praying to God. He said, please take this cup away from me, but let your will be done. And then at the end of that um, section of scripture, he's getting ready to be arrested. Well, now he's being put on trial. And while he was put on trial, he had to tell the truth, even though he knew that he'd have to die on the cross for it. So our whole point for today is Jesus came to show us the truth about God. So let's find out what happened when Jesus told the truth. And this story, this section of scripture is found in John chapter 18, verses 28, all the way through John 19, verse 16. So listen, or follow along. All right, Jesus' trial before Pilate. Jesus' trial before Caiaphas ended in the early hours of the morning. Then he was taken to the headquarters of the Roman governor. His accusers didn't go inside because it would defile them, and they wouldn't be allowed to celebrate the Passover. So Pilate, the governor, went out to them and asked, What is your charge against this man? We wouldn't have handed him over to you if he weren't a criminal, they retorted. Then take him away and judge him by your own law, Pilate told them. Only the Romans are permitted to execute someone, the Jewish leaders replied. This fulfilled Jesus' prediction about the way he would die. Then Pilate went back into his headquarters and called for Jesus to be brought to him. Are you the king of the Jews? He asked him. Jesus replied, 
Is this your own question, or did others tell you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate retorted. Your own people and their leading priests brought you to me for trial. Why? What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate said, So you are a king. Jesus responded, You say I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. What is truth? Pilate asked. Then he went out again to the people and told them, He is not guilty of any crime, but you have a custom of asking me to release one prisoner each year at Passover. Would you like me to release this king of the Jews? But they shouted back, No, not this man. We want Barabbas. Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate had Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip. The soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put a purple robe on him. Hail, King of the Jews, they mocked as they slapped him across the face. Pilate went outside again and said to the people, I am going to bring him out to you now, but understand clearly that I find him not guilty. Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said, look, here is the man. When they saw him, the leading priests and the temple guards began shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him yourselves and crucify him, Pilate said. I find him not guilty. The Jewish leaders replied, By our law, he ought to die because he called himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more frightened than ever. He took Jesus back into the headquarters again and asked him, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Why don't you talk to me? Pilate demanded. Don't you realize that I have the power to release you or crucify you? Then Jesus said, You would have no power over me at all unless it were given to you from above. So the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Then Pilate tried to release him, but the Jewish leader shouted, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who declares himself a king is a rebel against Caesar. When they said this, Pilate brought Jesus out to them again. Then Pilate sat down on the judgment seat, on the platform that is called the stone pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was now about noon on the day of preparation for the Passover, and Pilate said to the people, Look, here is your king. Away with him, they yelled. Away with him, crucify him. What? Crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the leading priest shouted. Then Pilate turned Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus away. Why did Pilate ignore the truth? He, I think he knew the truth. He knew Jesus was not guilty. And I wonder if Pilate even thought, this is the son of God. But Pilate ignored the truth. I think that he was afraid of the people. He didn't want them to be upset with him. I think he was also afraid of upsetting the emperor, Caesar. But why did the Jews, God's chosen people, ignore the truth? Maybe they thought Jesus was lying, or they thought he was breaking their laws, or they just didn't like Jesus. He wasn't the Messiah they wanted or expected. Even though people didn't believe him at all, Jesus kept telling the truth about who he was. Jesus thought telling the truth was important, and he stood firm 
in telling the truth, even though it meant he would die. But the truth Jesus told wasn't any old truth. It was that he came to show us the truth about God and to let us know how much God loves us. He loves us so much. He loves every person that existed, currently exists, and will exist. Jesus died so that all of us, all of us could be forgiven. And that's a truth that we can really believe in. Remember, though Jesus was God, he was also fully human. He experienced temptation. He didn't give in to temptation, but he felt it. So Jesus could have been tempted to stray from the truth. He knew that the people didn't believe what he was saying about God anyway. But he told the truth. And I wonder how Jesus felt when all those people were ignoring the truth. I imagine he was sad, maybe annoyed, frustrated. What would you have done if you were in Jesus's position on trial? I think some could fall into the category that we would have said anything to make the crowds happy. We, we didn't want to die. And then there's the other extreme where maybe you would have stuck to your guns. You would have stayed confident and told the truth. But I think most of us fall in the middle. I think it would have been really hard to tell the truth. I know it would have been for me. But why do you think Jesus kept telling the truth? We know he was perfect. But along with this, he knew that telling the truth was important. And Jesus needed to share the truth about God. He cared more about us being separated from God because of our sin and our messiness and our mistakes than he was about saving himself from a horrible, horrible death. Jesus wants us to follow his example and stand firm in the truth, even when it's hard to do. We can do this by reading God's truth in our Bibles, living out God's truth in our lives, following Jesus, our perfect example of truth. John 8 verses 31 through 32 say, Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So what, what were some of the things that Jesus taught us? Well, he taught us to love people, not just our friends or the people that we like, but our enemies, people we don't get along with, people we don't like. He taught us to serve others. He taught us to care for the sick, the hungry, the poor. Jesus came to show us the truth about God. And Jesus wants us to stand up for the truth too. So, how can you follow Jesus' example and stand up for the truth this week? Let me pray for us. Jesus, we love you. And Lord, I, I thank you so much for all that you do for us. God, I pray that you would help us to stand in the truth with confidence, even when it's hard. Help us to tell the truth and follow your example and be loving to others around us. It's in your name I pray. Amen.